McHale, who gets the catch. He's got patrol. Alongside Allison Volk, I'm Alex Westet, and Allison, you said it on our way in, odd that today's the first day of fall, but the weather certainly is going to be a topic, a topic of conversation here for game number one. Yeah, definitely today we've gotten second summer here in Minnesota. As we know, our seasons don't usually follow the actual weather patterns, but today's going to be a hot one, and obviously these two teams are both really great teams, and it's going to be an exciting matchup. You see there a weather, a slight breeze blowing to the southeast, 80 degrees, the temperature at the opening kick again you see the the officials are a little bit late to the game today and they're having a conversation with the captains now so that'll give us a little bit of time to look at things for uh, this matchup statistically as we take a look at the Metro East Conference standings between these two teams we see the Henry Sibley Warriors top of the table 4-1-1 one, one in conference play so far this year and the Matamidae Zephyrs perfect with a record of 3-0-0 but with a few a few fewer games played. Certainly a new place for Henry Sibley to be, but for Matamidi undefeated, that's what they're used to after three straight state championships. Yeah, Matamidi, I mean, they've got, you know, two less games played, so they got plenty of time to go back to the top here, and they are a very strong team. Um, clearly, obviously, after being state champs three straight years in a row. For these two teams, again, they're both built very similarly. They play very well. Um, so far here in the Metro East season, again, the record at home, Matamidi with one contest played so far. They score a lot of goals, and for years, defense and goaltending has been their M.O. after losing Meg Megan Lazawi to graduation from last year's state tournament team. They have replaced her with an excellent pair of defenders, and more importantly, they haven't lost a conference game since Hill Murray on the 2nd of October in 2018. So this is a team that thrives in conference play, and in this year, where they're forced to play conference teams, it's been well in their favor. Yeah, and I expect no difference, and I am expecting that they're going to come out pretty hard. Um, however, on the Henry Sibley side of things, they're a four one and one team, so they're also very good. Uh, the Zephyrs can definitely cannot take them lately. You saw there in our graphic, too, statistically very similar, 3.33 goals scored a game, only yielding half a goal a game in their six contests that are played so far. This is their last game of the season for the Henry Sibley Warriors before the postseason tournament begins, whatever that format will take when we get to that. For the Matamidi Zephyrs, they play twice more as they will play a very big one today against Henry Sibley and then also on Thursday in what many would refer to as a state title game in a normal year as the Zephyrs will travel over to Maplewood to face off against the Hill Murray Pioneers. Nice crowd here tonight. It is senior night for the Matamidi Zephyrs as they will honor their seniors at some point during the course of the day. We're still waiting for additional as the officials will go to check to make sure that there are holes in the net. And indeed, there are holes in the net. They're just not big enough to stop the ball from going straight through them at that point. And we will wait for the opening whistle to begin full-time play here today. Starting in goal tonight for the Matamidi Zephyrs as we take a look at the head coach of the Zephyrs, Dave Walden, his 15th season, who has thrived and led this program to unprecedented success here on the east side of White Bear Lake. As they will start with Paige Jansen in net for the Matamidi Zephyrs as they will move right to left across your television screen. Excellent tackle right off the ball right away to start things here for Matamidi as they travel in their road, their home blues rather, Matamidi against Henry Sibley tonight as the Warriors on the far side will wear their home, or their road, whites rather, with a red numbering on the back. Zephyrs can play it here inside the near area. They try to feed out in front, but defended well here by Sibley as Mariana Houle able to clear it back out before regaining possession here near the near sideline as they look to start back the other way. Both teams, as we mentioned just a few moments ago, very prolific offenses, but both with good goaltending here, and it'll be a matchup tonight as far as which one is going to give way first, the goaltending or the offense. 
the ball will go all the way back over the goal line. We'll see which way this rolls, and it'll be an early corner kick up coming here in favor of the Matamidai Zephyrs. Hey, right away, the Zephyrs uh, definitely put pressure on right away. You know, Henry Sibley started off with the kick at uh, center field, and they put pressure on and actually got control of the ball. In goal tonight for Henry Sibley is number one sophomore, Sydney Potter, as she'll do the net mining here, wearing a black kit compared to the white of her teammates. The first corner kick attempt, defended well by Sibley, and the ball goes out past the goal box, and it'll be a goal kick up coming here for the, the Sibley Warriors. Yeah, I think she wanted to get a little bit more on that goal kick. Um, that was a pretty low kick, uh, not too strong. You want to get that up a little bit higher and just put it right in the middle of the net. Ball into the far sideline, held in by the Warriors there. Again, the out-of-bounds line here at George Smith Field in Matamidai High School is the blue and yellow line that encompasses the entirety of the field, the yellow line all the way on the back out line of the field. This is our first game at Matamidai High School year here this season. Again, it's a double header, the girls game here at five, and then the boys game following at seven. Both contests should be thrillers, both teams on both matchups near the top of the table. We're certainly glad that you've joined us on Suburban Community Channels live on TV19, Channel HD01. We're also glad for those of you watching on Facebook.com slash Suburban Community Channels. We're glad that you're watching as we try out our live streaming feature, something that we certainly hope to consider as the athletic calendar rolls in to fall and winter sports as well. And of course, one more hello to those of you watching on Town Square Television, home of the Henry Sibley Warriors in the South Metro. Ball will go all the way back into the Sibley defensive half where it can be played again by Sydney Potter. Potter will look to go on the far sideline as they'll try to move it further up now. Emily Collins with a chance on it will go back onto the far sideline. They'll throw it in, but it goes out of bounds and a throw coming from Matamidai. As the Zephyrs working their way in, the Class 1A rankings released last Tuesday. Didn't get a chance to check on the updated rankings. We'll check on those at halftime for you. But the Matamidai Zephyr is currently number one atop the Class A ranking, and that will be a handball there. It'll be a Sibley free kick. But the Matamidai Zephyr is number one. They're 3-0 record, good for the best record in the state. Number two, the Benilde St. Margaret's Red Knights, Scarlet Knights, I believe, in fact. They're number two, Holy Angels three, Totino Grace four, and Blake five. So a very private school heavy top of the table and the rankings in class A of the Zephyrs. Unfortunately, that hasn't affected them much as they are looking for what could be a fourth state title in the class A rank. A chance now here for the Zephyrs as they're defended well off the ball. They'll try to take it back the other way as it goes right into the middle of the pitch. Cutting it back here, trying to keep it alive and playing it further was Krista Tyball. Ball goes back onto the far side where Tyball can play it again as it was Erica Broughton who fielded it to her instead. Broughton now center of the field. Tries to go off onto that far wing, trying to move it further along. Now Tyball sending it with a bit of a chip to it into the box, trying to move it forward as it goes in and out of bounds, and they will rule it will be a corner kick, I believe, in favor of the Zephyrs, their second on the game so far. Yeah, hopefully this time they can get a little bit more uh, on that corner kick and get it to just kind of lane right in front of the net, get to their players to head it in. Taking the corner will be Annabelle Hinstrom, sophomore midfielder for the Zephyrs. Right footed kick into the box. Oh, a dangerous chance there, but it goes high and over the back of the net, and it'll be a goal kick up coming here for Sibley. We've seen that a lot so far on the Matamidai free kicks, and both of them that they've had, they've chosen to go shallow instead of looking at that back post. That one was a little bit uh, more right in the center there, a little bit more dangerous. Um, but yeah, I think the first one, there was definitely more of a fluke, a little bit of a mistake. I don't think she wanted to be that shallow um, as she was. Potter going here near sideline looking for Mariana Houle, but a turnover now gives his efforts a chance. Laney Padelford trying to work her way back into the 18, cuts it back, and she'll play catch again as Campbell Waldsberger had it on the far side. Ball goes out of bounds again, and we'll have a Zephyr throw. Again, our first time here at George Smith Field at the home of the Zephyrs in the shadows of St. Andrew's Lutheran Church. If you've been a fan of SEC TV programming, a number of concerts, specifically that of the Matamidi, White Bear Lake, and Tartan bands and choirs have been broadcast from St. Andrew's Lutheran Church in years previous. And of course, all the sports that we cover here at Matamidi High School over the course of the year. Ball back 
onto the Henry Sibley defensive side of the field, much of it being played on the Matamidi side in the early going here. Nice defensive play made that time as the Warriors try to start back up the other side of the pitch. Defended well as it can be forced out of, by, out of bounds by Joji Berry. And a throw in coming here for Sibley as it'll be Hool trying to throw it further. Nice cross in front there. Was looking for Natalie Parnell, but it goes off of her shoulder. It can be held in here, though, by Marie Amadik. As it goes all the way back now into the Sibley defensive half, it will roll out of bounds and the flag will go in favor of the Matamidi Zephyrs. Most of the play so far has been on the Henry Sibley side of things. Matamidi is definitely controlling this game so far. There was a little bit of a push there by Henry Sibley, but Matamidi uh, didn't give them too much, and it's going back the other way. Audrey Berry and Caitlin Belke coming into the game for Matamidi. There's a substitution, too, on the Henry Sibley side. However, Matamidi High School has chosen to do the social distancing approach as the Matamidi substitutions and benches are on this side and the Sibley benches are on the far side as it's Sydney Potter making a save on a short angle chance and she'll smother and hold on. And so far for the Henry Sibley Warriors, Sydney Potter has been tested, but she's answered the bell every time that she's been called upon. And it's actually a goal kick here that did go out of bounds. Ball into the far side. This will go out of bounds. It'll be another Matamidi throw coming up on that far sideline. Henry Sibley, again, part of the Metro East Conference. A statistic of note to take a look at. Again, these teams play each other annually once home and away and that schedule rotates year in and year out. One thing that to note about this rivalry though is that the last time that Henry Sibley has scored a goal against the Matamidi Zephyrs came back in September of 2011. They have not scored against the Matamidi Zephyrs since then. And so as a result, this is probably a good a time for Sibley to not only break that scoreless streak, but to break that winless streak as well. Yeah, that's actually absolutely insane that it has been nine, almost ten years since they've scored the last scored against Montevideo. I know if I was Henry Sibling right now, I'd be so hungry. Just I'd be pushing and player playing my hardest just to break that break that uh, curse almost. Third attempt in the corner here for the Zephyrs. They try to go the back post into the six. Defended well that time by the Warriors as they'll send it back out. Trying to reset, but the ball out of bounds. It'll be a goal kick upcoming. Yeah, that was a definitely a much better uh, corner kick there for uh, Matamidi. Um, I do like that they uh, put a lot of pressure on. Uh, I think on that last kick, if she could maybe slow down the play a little bit, taking a little bit more time, may look back at some defense behind her, they might have had a little bit better of a chance. On the whistle, pair of substitutions here for Sibley. Amara Torres comes in on that far side, on the far side, and coming on the near side will be Piper Lane for the Warriors. Again, substitutions not allowed. If this is your first time watching high school soccer this year. Due to the COVID-19 restrictions, substitutions no longer allowed on corner kicks. And so they have to wait until the following whistle in order to make those substitutions as the Warriors displayed there. Chance now for the Zephyrs as they'll work back onto the far sideline. The ball that time off the foot of Caitlin Belke did not quite have enough on it or found a receiver. It goes out of bounds though as the Warriors try to restart play back the other way. And in the 10th minute here, no score. Zephyrs and uh, Warriors here from George Smith Field in Matamidi, Minnesota on a balmy fall night, 80 degrees of temperature at the opening kick. It'll stay that way throughout the duration of the game, so fatigue may become a factor in the late going. Chance here into the 18 on the near side now for Campbell Waltzberger. She'll cut it on back, trying to cross out in front, looking for the head that time as she had Caitlin Belkew open, looking for the reception there, and it'll be another corner kick as the ball went out of bounds off a of Warrior. The fourth already here in just one the 10th minute for the Matamidi Zephyrs. That was a great play. That was a perfect crossing pass into the um, into the six there, almost a six for a her teammate's head. Um, and yeah, another corner kick for uh, Matamida here. Line Ooh. drive, good sprawling attempt that time by Sydney Potter trying to make the play out. Excellent ball headed along there by Amara Torres for the Warriors as the ball still played in the Henry Sibley defensive end as the Warriors now able to clear it back out through the center where it can be played by the defensive back line and Haley James for the Zephyrs. Stop. I love that goalie play. That was absolute. That was so gutsy. I love everything about that. Another through ball without an intended receiver. So Zephyrs will go back to get to it. Joji Berry, as the streaking goaltender came on, Paige Jansen wearing a neon green kit number zero tonight for the Zephyrs. As will be a throw on the far sideline for the Warriors. It can be thrown in here by Ellie Orpen. 
Played in here now by Sarah Wagner. Wagner with a line drive looking on, on goal, and a save made the first of the night for Paige Jansen. The first shot of the night and real first real good chance that the Warriors have had in this one. Yeah, I don't know if I'd call that a real good chance. Um, that was a pretty easy standard save for the goalie there. Um, it was a pretty far out shot, but yeah, it was definitely the first pressure of their night and it's something to build off of. On the far side, taken down, advantage goes in favor of the Warriors. A little bit of a check there. It's Marie Amadek, sophomore number 16, the forward. And the argument is that they are looking for the penalty spot, it looks like. At least that's what we're hearing from the near sideline. Substitutions waiting to come on for the Zephyrs as the ball can be lined into the 18, defended well by Matamidai as it will go out of bounds. We'll have another whistle. It'll be a Sibley throw coming from that far sideline. As again, the throw here for Sibley. As we'll throw it into the near side, can be played by Natalie Parnell, has it go off of her head. And then back into the back line here as the Zephyrs will have to play on the rush here now and a chance with numbers. And a good stand-up play delays them temporarily as the ball pushed back out to the far side as Belke working in. Plenty of distance on the 18. And a good shot saved by Sidney Potter who holds on. That was a great play by Matamidai there. Um, you know, they had a two-on-one going and Good idea is to get a shot off and have your teammate go crash in that. Ball goes back to the Zephyr defensive line. Can be played further here again now by Broton. Trying to work it up here further onto the near side. Audrey Berry will keep it in there. Nice play right on the line. Can be played further now here as they try to get it for Waldsberger. Waldsberger working through. Excellent touch pass that time for Sydney Berry. Berry working into the six. Found a receiver. Oh, what a great save though by Potter. And then just to tap it in. And the Zephyrs on the scoreboard first. Annabelle Hinstrom taps it in. One to nothing Zephyrs. And that play set up with just an absolutely beautiful through ball. Um, and what a great, great pass across. Um, if Potter have hung on to that ball, we would be uh, looking at a Zephyrs goal. It's a little bit of a mistake on her part, I think. But, um, you know, the game's early, so Sibley definitely has a chance to come back. Annabelle Hinstrom getting the goal again, cleaning up the Sydney Potter rebound for the chance for the Matamidai Zephyrs and Matamidai on the scoreboard again as we've mentioned before they have not trailed in this head-to-head -head matchup between these two sides in quite some time again the last time that Sibley has scored against Matamidai came on the 22nd of September in a 6-2 Matamidai win Matamidai winning each of the last 10 matchups between the two teams. It'll be the third goal. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong team stats there. I apologize for that. It's the first goal of the season, rather, for Annabelle Hinstrom as the Zephyrs play from in front. Chance now for the Warriors as they work their way back into the center. Sarah Wagner has it go off of the defensive foot for the Zephyrs. Audrey Berry, nice little play through the legs in order to gain possession. She'll start a rush back up the other way for Matamidai. Working onto the far side. It can be played further once again here for Belke. That's will go further now on that far wing. Cross in front, looking to be played further now, but defended well by the Warriors as it can be cleared out of harm's way by Laney Pick, and it'll go out of bounds, and it'll be another Warrior throw on the far side. This will be a substitution coming in, I believe. This will be Amara Torres. Returning back into the game for Henry Sibley. As the ball thrown in, intercepted nicely that time by Belke. As it goes back into the center of the field, the Warriors trying to play it further, but a nice interception that time by Callie Halatsis. As the Zephyrs will look to replay. Broton looking on the near wing. If they can stay on side, they are able to do a good job of that. Harassed that time was Lily Lindquist, and it'll be a free kick up coming for Matamidai. Yeah, I kind of missed a the call there. Um, not sure what it was, but regardless, Matamita is going to have a great chance here to put another goal in the net. Stella Altier back into the game for the Warriors. It'll be a free kick here as a defensive back line, and Haley James will come up to take it. Here in the 15th minute, it'll play one to nothing. Matamita leading. James, right foot a kick through the box, got through a couple of legs of the defenders before the Warriors are able to clear it back out. James going back to get it here for the Zephyrs, able to hold the line nicely. Stockness tried to put it back in front before it can come back here for James. James looking for a through ball, but off the foot that time of Toronaskis. And a great defensive play made by her to force the out of bounds play and a substitution as well. 
as it'll be Delaney Selman coming into the Zephyrs and Maddie McCoy as well. Selman can be played further ahead now for tie ball as the ball goes all the way back now onto that back line before the Zephyrs continue to apply some pressure here from the far sideline working their way back into the eight but pushed out effectively and it'll be a goal kick up coming here for Matamidai. I'm sorry for Henry Sibley. Sixteenth minute of play. So far we've seen a lot of offensive pressure here from the Matamidai Zephyrs and the Henry Sibley Warriors just haven't been able to respond yet so far. What does Sibley need to do in order to get back on the attacking side of the pitch? First off, they need to get control of the ball a little bit more. Um, right now it's been all, all Zephyrs that have had the control of the ball. Um, Henry Sibley needs to maybe slow it down a little bit, maybe make sure to pass it back to their defensemen. Um, but yeah, right now they, they have no control. Ball to the far sideline. Can be held defensively very well at that by Matamidi as they'll try to start a rush back the other way, but a nice intercepted ball and defended well that time by Stella Altier on the back line for Henry Sibley. Working on the far side is Belke as she'll try to work on the back to the middle was Annabelle Hinstrom. Trying to work their way back in. The Zephyrs turn the ball over. Can be taken again here by Henry Sibley off on the far sideline as it's gone off of Stella Altier and a Henry Sibley throw coming up on that far side. Matamita has been doing a really good job too, just intercepting passes or when uh, Henry Sibley goes to trap the ball, they get right in there and take the ball away from them. Um, Henry Sibley needs to do that a little bit more, um, get in between the passes, maybe hustle a little bit more and then they'll have uh, a little bit more success. A couple of substitutions on the Henry Sibley side. Play has resumed. And the ball can be taken back through the attacking half. Nice job. A good Rush that time by Henry Sibley as Natalie Parnell had the ball further on the near side. It'll go out of bounds past the reach of Piper Lane. It'll be another throw here for Matamidi. As some more substitutions for the Zephyrs come back on as Laney Padelford returns and Savannah Stockness as well. And it'll be on the near side to make the throw, Kelly Halatzis. You're gonna probably see a lot of substitutions tonight with the heat and the sun. You know you wanna keep the girls fresh, make sure they don't get too dehydrated or too, uh, too overheated. Audrey Berry had the ball go off of her foot and difficult to control on that attempt. As another throw coming in, it'll be a Zephyr throw. I'll, I'll give it to you as well. I got that. As Halatzis, nice, nice. Let's go. right near her own bench, put the ball in, taken away by Henry oh, Sibley, nobody, but Halatzis nobody. recovering, trying on an excellent through ball that time, looking for Barry, but the whistle blows. And the ball will go back the other way, as offsides the call. Matamita too is also getting to all, all oh, of, like the 50-50 ball. balls. Um, you know they seem to be hustling a lot more right now than Henry Sibley did, is. The back line, Haley James, looking here and again near side Barry, for Halatzis. As she'll start to dribble what up the near side Maria? of the field. Barry Keep working on, around a screen. Halatzis puts it for Barry. Nice footwork there, but defended well again by Piper Lane for the Warriors. Ball back into the box goes out of bounds. It'll be a throw coming for Matamita near sideline near the corner. Again, Matamidai so far 0 for 4 on corner kicks. They've gotten a number of chances here as we're about halfway home in the opening half of play. And the Warriors can take the ball back the other way. Pass there from Winkle Hockey. Almost able to be cleared out, but the Zephyr is able to hold in. Looking for Barry that time off the foot of Maddie McCoy. The ball goes out of bounds. Another Zephyr throw. Good hustle, Maddie. Good hustle. As Callie Halatzis will take it here. And the Zephyr sideline. Quiet for the most part for now. Over the head pass was looking for a receiver out in front. He unable to do so. Goes off of Halatzis' foot, but defended well here by Sibley as Piper Lane can clear the ball back out and a start a rush back the other way for Henry Sibley. As they try to hold it in on the far side is Lily Leitner able to get over to it. Defended well, though. Excellent defense by Laney Padelford to try to take that ball away as it goes out of bounds and another Zephyr throw coming on the far sideline. Throw in as the Zephyrs look to keep the pace up. Looking on the far sideline, Caitlin Belke tried to center it in front off of a Warrior defender. Can be taken again here by Henry Sibley as Sarah Wagner tries to look up on the far side. Defeated further, Joji Berry will send it in. Looking for Berry. Audrey Berry with some space inside the 18. Berry looking to put it in and she does. Audrey Berry with the goal, two to nothing Zephyrs. Wow. 
Just a great move by there. Made the defender or the defenseman uh, just kind of stop in her tracks and not really know which way she was going to go. Um, that was an excellent, excellent goal. Audrey Berry, the junior forward, two goals in their season opening fixture against Hastings on the 29th of August. For Barry, that'll be her third goal of the season. Again, the Zephyrs don't keep stats as much as other teams do, so that's we're going off with what we have. But again, just excellent move here to get past this defense. And it all started too when uh, the Monomedi uh, defenseman uh, intercepted a pass that Henry Sibling was uh, putting up. Um, right now, Monomedi is doing a great job of creating turnovers and uh, getting control of the ball when they don't have it. Paige Jansen able to get to the ball. Right footed kick. Cuts the field in half as it goes back into the Henry Sibley sideline. Defended well that time as it goes off the foot of Walsfeld. As will tie up again here. Excellent four check and pressure that time from Sarah Wagner. Forces a turnover briefly before the Zephyrs can regain possession. Delaney Selman pushed it further there on the near side. Looking for Kate Holst before it can be intercepted again. And now another chance for the Zephyrs as they re-enter the attacking half. Defended well as Selman looked to go further for Halatsis near side. But the ball goes out of bounds. We'll see which way the throw will stay. Once again, Matamira just getting in there, making sure to create any type of turnovers, even when it seems like, okay, Henry Sibley's going to kind of have control. Matamira, there's a Matamira player right there to take it away from them. Warrior throw. Can be headed that time by Halatsis as the Warriors try to clear out of their own side of the field. Can be played further now here for Kate Holst, working from a far sideline. Holst trying to cross in front, but defended well that time by the Warriors as they'll look to clear back out through center. Can be taken here by Winklehacky. Further up ahead now was looking for Mariana Hool to try to start a rush back the other way, but was unable to do so cleanly. They will, however, get the throw here. Whistle will blow. Substitution on the far sideline for the Warriors. And substitution for Henry Sibley as Altier will leave the game as well as Mariana Hool. Instead, Marie Amadek will return back into the game as a ball. Be taken here again by the Zephyrs as I'll try to restart back into the attacking attacking half. Can be taken here again now by Halatsis. Tried to put it back in front. Taken again here off of Wagner's foot. Further along now, far side. As we'll try to play up on that far sideline before Mariana Hu, who actually just switched over from one side to the other. Can be taken further now and a chance here for the Warriors. Played further back again from just outside the 18. A good looking shot that time by Torinskis as it will go all the way back out of bounds, and it should be a Sibley throw coming on that far sideline. It's a throw off the foot that of Wagner that time for the Warriors as she tries to work her way back into the center. Long shot from about 15 or 30 yards out is held onto that time by Paige Jansen as she'll look to start play back the other way here for the Warriors. Another easy save for her. Uh, she's had a pretty easy night so far back in that for Matamidae. 23rd minute of play, two to nothing. Matamidi leads. Goals in the 13th minute from Hillstrom and 19th minute from Barry have what has been what has gotten Matamidi to this advantage. Now rush back the other way for the Warriors. Defended well that time by Joshi Barry as she'll send it back. It can be intercepted again here by Wagner for the Warriors. Looking back into the middle of the field, Laney Pick or Lily Leitner rather. Was able to get to it. Can be played again here by Maddie McCoy as they'll try to start a rush back the other way. Kate Holst looking to get around the defense is able to do so. She'll work her way back into the box but denied just at that last opportunity. And it's another corner kick coming in favor of the Matamidi Zephyrs. Yeah, this has just been a, a game that's just been all Matamidi, all Matamidi Zephyrs so far. Um, I'm expecting a little bit more of Henry Sibley after looking at their... Uh, their record and uh, how they've been playing. Um, so I'm hoping to see a little bit more of a push from them as the game goes on. Moltzen's corner goes into the six, but no receiver home as the Warriors are able to clear it temporarily. Goes back into the 18 where it can be defended again by Henry Sibley as they'll look to clear back out. But again, an aggressive back line able to get back and force another chance here for Matamidi. We'll come back here near side. Savannah Stockness in the road blues, to, or the home blues rather tonight for the Matamidi Zephyrs. Back here for Holst again, working her way through defenders, but able to go, and it's whistled down. It'll be a free kick here for Matamidi. I have no idea what that call was. Haley James, senior defender, 
one of a number of seniors to be recognized here on this Senior Night 2020, as there will be six seniors recognized in the girls program. Again, it speaks to how well and how developed this team is to be able to have that few of seniors on your team, but consistently be the number one ranked team in the state year in and year out. Yeah, they just must have a very good youth program uh, coming up through the ranks. I mean, that's kind of the way you got to go um, and how you stay strong for so long. Defended well that time as they tried to feed a ball further that time, did the Warriors, but unable to do so cleanly. He's defended well by Matamidai. Chance now back for the Zephyrs as they re-enter the attacking half. Ball can go back onto the far side, and the goaltender, Sidney Potter, will come out to make a play. And for Sidney Potter, who's been tested frequently tonight, not much you can say on any of the goals that she's given up, as none of them have really been as the result of a misplay that she has made. Yeah, I mean, the first goal is definitely something I think she probably should have had. Um, but other than that, she's had a very strong night. She's been aggressive. I really love that play that she had on that corner kick where she dove out and punched the ball out of the, the 18. Um, but, yeah, I mean, she has not had a lot of help back there. Five substitutions as the Zephyrs rolling their lines at this point. Um, we'll come in now and another chance for the Zephyrs as they re-enter the attacking half. An excellent move that time made by Lily Lindquist as they try to work back into the box as they'll do so on the edge of the 18. Defended well that time as the ball goes off at the foot of Piper Lane out of bounds and it should be another throw coming in in favor of the Matamidai Zephyrs. That's just a lot of, I mean, it's just incredible the amount of pressure that Matamidai has been putting on Henry Sibley. And, um, you know, they've been close, playing close to their 18 all night. Ball there, a turnover, goal kick coming. As the wise decision made by Mariana Hull not to play that ball. We have another substitution on the far sideline for the Henry Sibley Warriors as we've hit the 27th minute of play. Two to nothing to score. Hillstrom at the 13th, Barry at the 19th. That has given the Monomedi Zephyrs their two to nothing lead. We've talked about the last 10 matchups and in recent years it's been closer. Monomedi three to nothing last year at Henry Sibley. A two to nothing decision here two years ago, one to nothing three years ago in 2017. But in there as well, a large stretch of very lopsided victories nine to nothing, ten to nothing, and seven to nothing. The Matamidai Zephyrs over the Henry Sibley Warriors. As the ball goes back here, defended well, can be played here, Piper Lane. The ball goes out of bounds, another throw coming here as again Matamidai aggressive on the push of the play. Waltzberger will try to throw it in off of Broughton's foot be played further again as coming over to make that play was Emily Collins defensively. And now the Warriors able to send it back up through to center. Can be played further for Marie Amadek as it goes out of bounds. Can be played further again now. No, it is held in. Hillstrom tried to center it back in front, but it's played here again by Henry Sibley. Laney Leitner able to take it. Cups back here on the near side though and an excellent interception by Savannah Stockness. Through ball, looking for Waltzberger on the near wing. Waltzberger trying to work around the defense of Piper Lane. Able to do so, but not able to hold it in. Goal kick up coming for the Warriors. So once again, I mean, there's been times where uh, on this last play where Henry Sibley, you know, they just had a ball. It just kind of bounced off their forward's foot, went right to the Zephyr's defenseman. And, you know, the Henry Sibley needs to uh, hang on to the ball a little bit more. This, the last uh, regular season matchup for the Henry Sibley Warriors as they will have played at the conclusion of the night. They will have played all their scheduled contests and so we will not see them or until the Metro East Conference Tournament in whatever format that will look like. Again, each conference is choosing to do their own version of a tournament this year and so each conference has a different way of doing things. So stay tuned to the Metro East Conference website as well as other social media in order to find out information. Another corner kick up coming here from Matamidai. It'll be their sixth of this opening half as they are still 0-4 on the corner kick. And what's been a stellar first half for the Matamidai Zephyrs, especially teams really the only thing that hasn't been working for them so far yet. Yeah, I mean, when you have that many corner kicks, you know, you need to start putting some in. And once again, just a nice aggressive play right there by their goalie, um, by the Henry Sibley going to knock that out and push it out of the 18. Sydney Potter aggressive on the challenge. She'll have to be again as she's able to get to it with a couple of Zephyrs draped around her as Audrey Berry and Campbell Waldsberger looking for the redirection. We'll be back here again in just a few moments as the second game of tonight's doubleheader, the Henry Sibley boys against the Matamidai Zephyr boys. Uh, we'll kick off right about 7 o'clock again, the usual media for that. Again, we'll be on 
Suburban Community Channels TV 19 HD 801. Again, you can find us if you haven't found us already on Facebook at Suburban Community Channels. As the ball into the 18, trying to work her way around and get through it was Lily Lindquist and another great save by Sydney Potter. That was a good hard shot right into the goalie though, um, and she was a, that was pretty easy save for her. Um, it did look like it was a little hard. Broughton has a go off of her foot. It can be fielded again here back on the far side by Hillstrom, who tries to center again. Broughton for Hillstrom, and then all the way back further for Padelford. Again, we've seen the Zephyr team play with pace and play with aggressiveness here in the early going. It can be played again here by Lindquist, trying to feed it back into the box for Belke, unable to do so, as the Warriors will clear it back out off the foot that time of Laney Pick. They'll go out of bounds. It'll be another Zephyr throw. Throw back in off of Barry. Can be played further again here by the Warriors as they try to field it back in, but defended well. Excellent tackle that time by Henry Sibley's Torinskis, but the whistle will blow, an advantage in favor of Matamida. And just once again there, you know, Matamida, they did, it looked like they were going to lose the ball, that Henry Sibley was also going to have a possession that they created a turnover, but, you know, she was aggressive right back and was able to force a free kick. Erica Broughton to take the free kick. Has a right-footed kick from about 40 yards out, looking for the back corners, no good, and wide to the right. It'll be another goal kick upcoming here for Sydney Potter. Substitutions, three of them on the Henry Sibley side. As Altair will come in, as well as Sarah Wagner. And another warrior who went hiding on the far sideline already before we got a chance to see her. Again, Suburban Community Channels on Facebook is where you can find our live streams. You can go ahead and hit the subscribe and notification button to notify when we go live for all the contests that we are going to do so. Throw on the far side, that can be taken again here by the Warriors as Winklehacky tries to throw it back in. Again, defended well by Broughton for the Zephyrs. Nice through ball trying to start pace back the other way. Lily Lindquist can take it in, but defended off of her foot before it's intercepted by Broughton with another nice move around the defender. Audrey Berry. Barry working around. She has one goal deking through the defense. Tonight goes from a sharp angle. Hits the top of the football crossbar. Goes out of bounds, but another nice run for Audrey Barry. Yeah, she's definitely dangerous. That was a very great play. That was a very good play by her. I can't talk tonight. Um, that was a very good play by her. Uh, she used her speed to get around the defenseman, and she clearly has a strong left foot. Sydney Potter, line drive kick on the near sideline. It's taken first by... Altier before battling for it here in the near side with Waldsberger. Waldsberger behind the back. The whistle blows, still advantage Zephyrs. We've hit the 33 minute mark here. Two to nothing, Zephyrs lead. Hillstrom in the 13th, Barry in the 19th is how we have gotten here so far. It's about the like third or fourth free kick the Zephyrs have had from this, from about this same spot. Broden looked lined up to take the free kick. Instead, she'll defer to Mickey Stockness. Stockness, another senior. Seniors to be honored here at halftime. Looking for a cross into the 18. Defended well by the Warriors as they'll push it back to the outside edge. But Padelford can send it back in quickly. Bounces home without a receiver. Unable to find one yet before the Warriors able to clear it back out once again as they look to try to rush, start a rush. But the experience of Padelford Strong at first before delaying, and another advantage in I, favor of the Zephyrs. I, yeah, I have no clue what the call was on that one either. Be a free kick coming for Matamidai. Just inside of their attacking side of the field. I, does it seem like the ref's blowing the whistle really late on these? Feels like he is. Unless something happened behind the play. Erica Broughton to take the free kick from about 40 yards out. Broughton on a line drive saved by Wagner. That's an easy save for her and one that a goaltender will take every day of the week. She'll be able to hold on and start the rush back the other way. Can go off the foot this time of Leitner as they try to move it further back onto the far sideline. For Danica Veerling, intercepted though by Matamida. Broughton trying to look further that time for Belke on the far wing. Belke trying to work around Veerling, able to do so, but then was assisted defensively by Emily Collins. And again, the battle just inside the 18, working around Belke, trying to work her way to the six, cut it back, looking for Barry. Barry cutting it back once again, spinning, save made by Sydney Potter. What a great shot and even better save. 
Nice stutter step move by Lindquist as she works into the 18. Barry from a sharp angle batted away once again by Potter who comes at it again to knock it back out of the 18. Winklehacky going back onto the far sideline trying to keep the ball in play. Push out of bounds by Marie Amadik as it goes back onto the far sideline. Now on a chance here for Sibley to throw it in. We played further that time. Broughton able to get to it first. Back again for Barry, for Joji Barry. Comes back here near sideline, can be moved further along. As it's Waldsberger able to play it. Ball intercepted again here by Sibley as they look to start a rush back the other way, but not enough on that attempt to move it further. And back into the Matamidi attacking half. Kaitlin Belke. Belke further now. A chance now for the Zephyrs. They try to through ball, but they are unable to do so as the Warriors able to take it back the other way. Amara Torres. Trying to work it here before Broughton able to get to it. Further along now, another through ball looking for Belke far wing. Belke trying to get around the defense of Collins. Able to do so, Belke from a sharp angle tried to cross in front, but without a receiver home, it will go back and near the corner, but a great job to hold it in that time was Waltzberger. Fought for in the corner, ball still in bounds and an excellent play made that time by the back defensive line. As a cross back in front into the 18, Fought for by Belke and Veerling before the ball comes all the way back through center and a good chance defensively that time by the Henry Sibley Warriors. Ball out of bounds. Substitutions will come in. For the Matamita Zephyrs is Krista Tyball and Haley James will return. We'll take a look at that last save here again for Sydney Potter and this is part of the reason why the Warriors are still in this an excellent shot and an excellent save by the senior goaltender yeah if it wasn't for Potter I mean this game could easily be four or five zero right now um, you know she's been tested a lot a lot in this game with some good hard shots um, and she's come out and has been you know been solid outside of the one mistake she's made otherwise she's been absolutely solid Turnover that time off the foot of Amara Torres before it can come back here on the near side. A little bit too far as Waltzberger tried to race to get to it here. 37th minute of play. We're going to have substitutions on the Henry Sibley side of things as they'll send three players on. And so far, Matamidi, the better of chances, the better of play so far. A lot of time being spent in the, what would be the north end of George Smith Field. And so far, two to nothing here. Matamidi leading over Henry Sibley. Perfect on the season, 3-0-0. They also have Hill Murray on their schedule, who they will play on Thursday at Mary Queen of Victory Stadium in Maplewood. We take in here now again Lindquist. Gone back further for Broughton. Broughton working back into an open area, right on goal smothered that time by Sydney Potter. She will hold on and try to start another Sibley rush back the other way. Into to the air off of the foot of Broughton. Can be fielded again here by Waldsberger. And she'll look to create a through ball chance, looking for Belke, able to get to it. Nice pullback move there. As Belke tries a through ball, it will go out of bounds. It'll be a goal kick up coming here for Henry Sibley. Again, you hear the conversation from the far side. You need to go to the ball. And again, Matamidi, as Allison has said a couple of times tonight, has been the better on those 50-50 balls here in the early going. Yeah, Matamida, the other thing I've noticed is that they just they don't give up on the play. Even when Henry Sibley does take the ball away from them, they don't give up on it. Um, they use their hustle, they get that ball back right away. Ball cleared back into the attacking side for Henry Sibley, goes out of bounds. It'll be a Matamida throw coming in as we've reached the 38th minute of play. Two to nothing, goals from Hillstrom at the 13th, Barry at the 19th minute, giving the Zephyrs this two to nothing advantage. Again, a team in the Monomedi Zephyrs that has won each of the last 10 matchups between Henry Sibley and Monomedi. Again, the Zephyrs, def three time defending uh, Minnesota State High School League Class A girls soccer champions. They have not lost a conference game since October 2nd of 2018 against Hill Murray. And on their title defenses too, the route to those titles has looked the same every time where they have beaten Hill Murray in the section championship, Bemidji in the state quarters, and Orono in the state finals. So some similarities there between Matamidi in each of their appearances as we've hit the last minute of play in this opening half, the 40th minute of 40. Chance now on the 
far sideline as the Warriors have a player who's taken down. And it'll be another throw up coming here for the Zephyrs on that far sideline. This ball was out of bounds. Chance now far side. Ball can be thrown in. Kick further now, can be taken back and kicked out of bounds as the Warriors look to wind the clock down here and regroup here for the second half. Ball thrown by Belke on the far sideline. Can be taken again here by Matamidai. Centering pass looking in front, for, in front for Broughton. Can be played further again now. Nice shot on from distant Stockness. Had it, Potter made the save. And with that, with the last four seconds of this opening half, the Zephyrs and the Warriors will head to the halftime with the Matamidai Zephyrs leading two to nothing in a game that aside from the score that we see, really hasn't been close. Definitely not. I mean, the Zephyrs have definitely out hustled, out worked, um, you know, have controlled the play um, in comparison to Henry Sibley. Um, if I'm Henry Sibley, I'm going back to the bench saying, you know what, you know what guys? That was a bad half, but we're only down 2-0. We have a full another half to come back and be in this game and win it. Hillstrom at the 13th, Barry at the 19th. That's how we have our score. Two to nothing, Zephyr's lead. We'll be back after a few short messages. This is your home for Monomate Ice Soccer. Do you worry about how much someone drinks? Do you feel angry or depressed most of the time? Do you feel neglected or unloved? Do you feel you attract people who tend to be compulsive or abusive? Do you have money problems because of someone else's drinking? Are you afraid or embarrassed to bring your friends home? Do you feel that if the drinker loved you, she or he would stop drinking? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you are not alone. More than half of all adults have a family history of alcoholism. Not everyone trapped by alcohol is an alcoholic. Families and friends are suffering too. Al-Anon and Alateen can, can help. Call 1-866-200-0223 or visit al help. I had to pack up all my things. I had to leave my home. And I never knew where I was going next. It felt like I never even had a say. But then you came along. Change a child's story. There's a child in foster care waiting for a volunteer like you. Learn how you can help at casaforchildren.org. Drownings are the number one cause of accidental death for young children. Simple safety steps are the best way to prevent these tragedies. Make sure kids learn how to swim. Designate an adult water watcher to watch kids in and around water. Save the phone calls and texts for when the kids are out of the water. Properly fence all pools with fences at least four feet high and with self-closing, self-latching gates. When above-ground pools aren't in use, remove the ladders. When pools aren't in use, cover them. Teach kids to stay away from drains. And if a child is missing, check the pool or spa first. Consider the steps you take, then add a few more, because you never know which pool safety step will save a life. Until it does, simple steps save lives. To learn some new ones, visit PoolSafely.gov. I'm a veteran. My victory was admitting I had PTSD and getting help. As America's veterans face challenges, DAV is there. I no longer see it as a weakness, but as a sign of strength. I call it post-traumatic growth. DAV provides a lifetime of support, helping veterans of every generation get the benefits they've earned. I am a veteran. I lost both legs in Vietnam. Every year, DAV helps more than a million veterans so they can reach victories great and small. My victory was getting my benefits 
and a good education. I'm a veteran. When I got out, I felt like Nora was safe. My victory was finding the help I needed. But there's more to be done and more victories to be won. Thanks to DAV, now I feel like I'm human again. Help support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. Halftime at George Smith Field from Matamidi, Minnesota. Two to nothing, the Matamidi Zephyrs entertain a lead over the Henry Sibley Warriors alongside Allison Vogt. I'm Alex Westad. Hello again to everybody watching us on Suburban Community Channels and on Suburban Community Channels on Facebook. Um, again, all of our games will be live streamed at that point. Again, an additional hello to those of you watching on Town Square Television in the South Metro. And unfortunately for those Henry Sibley fans, it's been a very one-sided affair here in the opening half as we take a look at some highlights. Audrey Berry with a beautiful cross right into the box and just an excellent finish attempted. And then a great follow-up there. It looked as though it may have been an own goal off the foot of the defender, but instead it will not be Hillstrom, as I had said earlier. It will instead be... Kalen Belke, who gets credit for the goal. And then on the second Matamidi Zephyr goal, all Audrey Berry, an excellent move, goes to the back corner. Not much that the goaltender, Sidney Potter, can do about that one. And as a result, that's how the Zephyrs have taken advantage of a 2 to nothing lead. Much of the offensive zone time has been in the Matamidi half. And Sibley just hasn't been able to clear the ball out consistency. And the key for them for the second half has to be possession. Yeah, I mean, definitely one of the things that has to be possession. Another thing I would say that has to be hustle. You know, a lot of times I kind of see Henry Sibley almost giving up on a play before, you know, it's even over um, and just letting Matamidi kind of run away with the ball. Um, Matamidi has been really great at, uh, creating, um, at creating turnovers and then keeping the possession of the ball once they have it. Matamidi Zephyrs, number one on the Class A girls soccer rankings as of the 15th of September. You see there, um, 2-0 at the time that the poll was put out, 3-0 now. Vanilla St. Margaret's, Holy Angels, Totino Grace Blake, Visitation, Orono, Lourdes, Cloquet Carlton, and Hill Murray round up the top 10 in Class A. And for the Zephyrs, that's a spot where they're used to being, and even though there probably won't be a state tournament this year, that number one ranking still carries a lot of weight for a lot of people. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, for these seniors, uh, something that they can say is that, hey, we won three state titles all four years. I was in, uh, you know, high school, in uh, high school soccer. And then our fourth year, of course, due to COVID, we couldn't play it out, but we saw a number one ranking. Matamidi 0 for 6 on corners in the opening half. Goals again by Belke in the 13th, Barry in the 19th. 2 to nothing. Zephyrs lead at the half. This is your home for Matamidi soccer. Chiru has no choice. She and millions like her must walk miles every day for dirty water. But together, we can end their walk by providing clean water close by. Instead of spending hours walking to get water that makes them sick, girls can be in a classroom that expands their minds, and moms will gain back time to care for their families. Sons and daughters can grow up strong, finally free of sicknesses caused by dirty water. At World Vision, care about clean water runs deep. Deep enough to reach one new person with clean water every 10 seconds. Because every child, every person, everywhere deserves clean water and the chance to rise to their full potential. It's true, when you just add water, you change a life. Learn more at worldvision.org. 736 million people struggle to meet their basic needs. An estimated 40 million people have fallen victim to human trafficking. 51 million kids go hungry every day. And every day, United Way and our partners, including Kellogg, Wells Fargo, and UPS, fight for the health, education, and financial stability of every person in every community. Here are AARP top tips on caregiver preparedness during coronavirus. Form a team that can help with caregiving tasks. Take an inventory of essential supplies in your loved one's home. Make a list of the care recipient's medications. Schedule regular calls to fight isolation. 
Finally, take care of yourself too. Follow the Centers for Disease Control's guidelines for coronavirus safety. For more caregiving tips, go to aarp.org caregiving. In 2010, Liz was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. After losing her job due to treatment, she was left with few options. A housing voucher gave her hope that she could find a place to live with her daughter. To her surprise, that same voucher would result in her being denied housing. I felt so dejected and ashamed. It was shocking to me that people actually just discriminated against you for the type of income you were utilizing to pay your rent. Now, thanks to a new law in New York State, it is illegal for people like Liz to be denied housing based on their source of income. Do you use non-wage income such as veterans or disability benefits, Section 8 vouchers, or child support to pay for housing? If you suspect discrimination, call 1-800-788-9898 to contact the New York State Office of the Attorney General or visit endincomebiasny.com. I am at this point proud to say that I am using my voucher and a proud renter of an apartment where my daughter and I are very happily living. Start of the second half here, George Smith Field, Matamidi High School, two to nothing. Zephyrs hold the advantage over the Heavenly Sibley Warriors as we get start ready to start the second half alongside Allison Vogt. I'm Alex Westad. The big news out of the Minnesota State High School League this week. On Monday, a special session of the Board of Directors approved the following. Volleyball canceled until the spring has allowed to be in, uh, has been allowed to resume practices can begin next Monday and contests can begin as early as October the 8th with an 11 week season and two weeks of a postseason that would begin November 30th football postponed until the spring is now allowed as as previously scheduled with practices starting also on September the 28th first week of game scheduled the week of October 5th and a two-week fo football postseason planned the week of November 16th. So for a while, soccer, the only game in town, will soon be joined once again, actually at the conclusion of the soccer season, as volleyball and football players will get their chance. The decision to play winter sports still to be decided. That decision expected at the Board of the Directors meeting on Thursday, October the 1st. You can follow us at SCC TV Sports on Twitter for information as those directives are approved of. And we are underway here on the second half from George Smith Field. Early chance here as the Zephyrs had the possession off the draw. They chose to go aggressively into the Attacking part can be played further here again by Broton. As the Zephyrs will switch sides, they'll move left to right here across your television screen as they will look to maintain and build upon this 2 to nothing advantage and put the Sibley Warriors away. A through ball there, defended well, but a chance and an excellent challenge that time made by Paige Jensen, the junior goaltender. She comes out to make the save. Not tested much tonight, but fundamentally has been sound. And a chance now back the other way for Matamidi. Through ball can be found here by Kate Holst. Who tries to put it further again here for Barry. Barry with a nice little spin move, working around from a sharp angle. Shot goes high and wide and into the diving pit behind the net at the south end. And another goal kick of coming here for the Warriors. That was another great move by Barry. Just a nice little spin move. The defender was not expecting it at all. Of course, I'm sure she wishes she got that ball on net. But regardless, it was a great chance for Matamida. Caitlin Belke at the 13th minute. Audrey Barry at the 19th minute for the Zephyrs. That's how they lead two to nothing. As the ball will go out of bounds here and another chance on a throw up coming for Matamidi. Again, we admire certainly the mask wearing of all the Zephyr players and the coaches, coaching staff here on the near sideline. Certainly following the protocols that have allowed us to return to play in these circumstances. Again, a number of rule changes have been made. The only one brought up so far that's been applicable tonight is the substitution of zone corners. But otherwise, certainly love to see the protocol following that the Matamidi Zephyrs have been doing. Ball here on the near side. Chance back the other way for the Warriors as they'll try to take it back up here. And a chance now for Amara Torres. Torres with a through ball defended well, though off the foot of Krista Tyval. Ball will go out of bounds. It'll be a Sibley throw. As the throw can be taken here again by Orpin. Trying to go further that time for Amara. Can be played further back here now where Natalie Parnell will work it back into the center of the field. Can be played again here now Sarah Wagner. Wagner from a sharp angle but defended well. Goes all the way back now to the far side where it can be played further along now. And a chance goes out of bounds. 
As a fly has joined us in the press box here. <laughs> the windows are open. On what is a beautiful night here. Started out hot, but it will certainly cool down as the evening progresses. Ball on the far side. Thrown in. Pushed further along now before it can be intercepted and taken back the other way by Lily Lindquist from Matamidi. Try to elevate her from Barry. Unable to do so before Broughton does a great job of challenging the play. Can be taken again here. Near side. Goes out of bounds. Past the rushing attempt of Annabelle Hill Hillstrup out of bounds. Fought for right at the midfield stripe. Taken back for the Warriors as they'll try to move back into the attacking half. Laney Pick shuttled along for Sarah Wagner as they'll try to work back onto the far side. Could be taken further now and a chance here for Henry Sibley as Hool tries to put a cross out in front but gotten to it first that time. Campbell Walsberger goes out of bounds but a throw coming on the far sideline for Sibley. And this is kind of the pace that we have to see. We talked about at halftime how important possession was for the Sibley Warriors to be able to get back in this game. Yeah, Sibley definitely needs to uh, play with a little bit more pace, play with a little bit more hustle, um, you know, create their own chances and their own turnovers. Um, and looks like it's going to be a kick or a throw the other way. Looks like it will be a throw on the far sideline for the Zephyrs as they'll throw back the other way. The Zephyrs in their home blue uniforms, the Warriors in the road whites. There's a ball out of bounds again. Another Zephyr throw coming as Waltzberger will play it. Off the hands that time of Kate Hulse. Not the hands, rather, but the feet. Ball out of bounds again here by the Sibley bench. Can be thrown in again. As we've hit the 45th minute of play. Again, the boys matchup to follow. This one at 7 again. Same way you're watching this one. Stay tuned. The boys matchup will follow. We'll be back at it again next week from White Bear Stadium in a Suburban East Conference rush. Has a chance now back the other way here for Henry Sibley as it can be fielded through the box. No warrior able to get to it there, though a little bit of a miscommunication. The ball goes over the ball over the back line. It'll be a goal kick up coming from Matamidi. Okay, hopefully we'll keep seeing a little bit more of this pressure from Henry Sibley. Um, you know, get back into this game a little bit more so it's a little bit less lopsided. Again, next week, Tuesday, stream at 7. White Bear Lake and Stillwater from White Bear Stadium. The girls' team ranked in the top 10 in Class 2A. And again, certainly hoping to do well out of the Suburban East in their conference tournament. The ball will go out of bounds. It'll be a Sibley throw on that far sideline. We have a whistle. Substitutions as four Zephyrs will come in here near sideline as Moltzon, Halatsis, McCoy and Selman will substitute in for Matamidi. And into the game for the Warriors on the far sideline, Sarah Wagner returns. Number four, number 13, number 17, and number As it will be a Sibley throw, far sideline. Can be taken here by Wagner, but goes off of her foot. Flung into the air. As the Warriors look to restart play back the other way, they will have a brief rush here, but defended well again by the Matamidi Zephyrs as they'll force the ball all the way back. Goes to center of the pitch now. Can be taken again here by Kate Holst. Footed back into the attacking half here from Henry Sibley as the ball will go out of bounds. It'll be a Warrior throw. It looked as though it was close to that line, but we did see it roll over right at that last moment and a throw coming for the Warriors near side. Ellie Orpin. Orpin thrown in. Warrior goes down as Winklehacky looked to be tripped up on the play towards the ball. But the good shot on goal, rather, saved by the goaltender Paige Jansen and will hold on. 47th minute, 2 to nothing. Zephyr's lead. Back into the center of the pitch now. Great communication from the Zephyrs as they'll look to run back the other way. Looking for Barry, but unable to get the pass through as it was defended well that time by Natalie Parnell. Back into the back line for the Warriors. Emily Collins had it off of her foot. Can be played further along now. Wagner will cut it back. Looking for some room here in the center. Um, Stella Altier. Altier with a through ball, was looking further up ahead, but defended pretty well that time by Joji Berry as the goaltender Jansen able to make it, make the save and she'll hold on. 
I did find a little bit more pressure here from Hen Henry Sibley so far this half. Um, you know, they haven't had too many great chances, but the play has definitely been a little bit more in the Zephyr zone, I would say. Barry tried to play it along, but Emily Collins, strong on the foot, takes that chance away from Matamira. Again, Emily Collins has looked great on that back line, along with Piper Lane defensively, defensively for the Warriors coming into this game. Half a goal a game allowed as it'll be another Sibley throw coming on the far sideline. And aside from that first onslaught of the first half, here's we start the second half, eight minutes gone in it. This back line for the Warriors has started to look a lot better. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, uh, Barry did have that one great uh, little move uh, to kind of get the defense woman all kind of kind of twisted around, but this, uh, but they have been solid since. Sibley on the far side, Zephyr throw up coming. Looking further for Kate Holst, knocked off of her foot, can go back into the Sibley back line, headed that time by the Zephyrs, as they'll go back trying to reset. Haley James. James will slow up, looking to feed Moltzen here on the near side. Great job to keep that play alive. Moltzen trying to spring Barry. Barry with some fancy footwork there, trying to work back into the 18 from a far sideline. Kate Holst working through and just unable to get through it. And a great job by Sidney Potter able to get that. And this will be the first corner kick of the, of the second half for these Zephyrs. Yeah, another great chance there from Anamita. Of course, uh, Potter comes up big again. Again, the first corner kick of the second half of coming here from Matamita. They were 0 for 6 in the first half as they'll center it, looking for a redirection, defended greatly by the Zephyrs in that chance as they try to keep it alive. And they'll reset once again as the Warriors unable to pounce on that chance. Near side. Tyvo, looking back here, held in by Moltzan, but the ball out of bounds. It'll be another Sibley throw. Substitutions now to a side for both the Zephyrs and the Warriors. As Wolfsfeld and Belke will re-enter the game. On the other side for Sibley, Amara Torres will re-enter as well as Autumn Archambault as the throw. Pushed further up the pitch now. Excellent defensive play and a great move that time by the Warriors as they'll try to spring it back here on the near side. Chance now as Altier working, trying to get back into the edge of the 18, but lost the handle. And Joji Berry able to defend well. She'll send it out of bounds, allowing the defense chance to reset. It'll be a Sibley throw. Coming near sideline, pretty close to that corner flag. The throw back into the 18, fielded again here. Ooh. Defense that time that may have hurt as McCoy takes the ball close to the face. Yeah, that never feels good. Warriors playing with the ball again here as it goes off the foot that time of Laney Pick. Out of bounds, it'll be a Zephyr throw here near side. Ellie Wolves felt to defer. As the Zephyrs will communicate, who will take it? It'll be Krista Tyvall, one of the seniors, as more substitutions come on for the Zephyrs. Zephyr Savannah Stockness will return, as well as Lainey Padelford. It'll be Padelford to take the throw as soon as the official gives approval. Padelford's throw was looking further up ahead that time for Wolfsfeld. The ball will go back into the center of the field, past. A couple of players, ooh, taken down that time, and the Warriors will take advantage of it as they'll try to look and get play going back the other way. Torres lost the handle on it, though. It can be taken again here by Joji Berry, far side, from a sharp or a long distance out. Goes past the goal line. It'll be a goal kick up coming here from Matamidi. Caitlin, just remember, she's yours, okay? I know. Full side of her inside. Keep her to the outside of you. As will be Joji Berry. We'll take the goal kick, the right footed kick going near side, looking for Padelford, but it goes a little bit further as it leaks now to Caitlin Motzan. Padelford off of her foot as she tried to push play back onto the attacking side of the field. It'll be another throw coming for the Warriors here. There's a throw coming near side, Piper Lane, the sophomore defender slash midfielder, as 
There'll be substitutions on the Sibley side. It's a throw in. Played using the body. Trying to get it back out in front. Can be defended here by Matamidi. Before a takeover now here again by Amara Torres. From a sharp angle out. Paige Jansen able to make the save off the Natalie Parnell shot. And she'll clear the ball back up through the center of the pitch. Wagner headed before it can be played further again here by Henry Sibley as it will go back to Padelford for Matamidi. Not able to field it cleanly. Ties up that time with Beerling. As the Zephyr's able to win that battle, they'll clear it back into the defensive zone as the ball will go out of bounds and we'll have a Zephyr throw near sideline. Moltzen, further up ahead here for Wolfsfeld. As the ball will go back, and the Zephyr's Wagner will have a go back here for Sibley on the defensive side. It can be taken again here by Amadek as it goes back here. And a chance now again back the other way for Amara Torres. Torres able to field it further now here for Parnell as the ball will bounce. So try to maintain possession. Back on the far sideline, a chance now on a rush as Kelly Halatsis has it further now again for Krista Tyval, who works her way back into the center of the pitch. Uh, that's Belke, able to get back through it, slowing down now a chance for Matsen. Matsen working back into the defense, off the foot that time, Belke working back here onto the near wing. Pulls it back, Padelford. Padelford avoiding a challenge. Able to put the ball back into the 18. As the Warriors able to clear it back out. Padelford aggressive, forces another chance here for the Zephyrs. As that time it goes off the foot that time of Wolfsfeld here from the right wing. Trying to put it back in front, looking to communicate with Caitlin Motzen, unable to do so. Padelford tried to make the challenge there, but was unable to do so cleanly as the ball back now on the attacking half for the Warriors. They'll look to field it again here down a chance for Parnell. Working back here into the area. Chance now Amara Torres. Torres working back in front to the edge of the 18. Oh, and just lost her footing that time. Was Aaron Winklehacky before a chance for Paige Jensen was able to be saved. Yeah, another great push um, there by Henry Sibley. They're definitely playing a lot better this half than they were the first half. Um, one thing you want to be careful about if you're Mata Mirai, you've had a lot of corner kicks and a lot of chances. You definitely don't want those things to come back and haunt you later in the game. Whistle blows, foul called. It'll be a free kick coming here for Mata Mirai as we've hit the 60, 66th minute, I'm sorry, 56th minute of play. Two to nothing, Zephyr's lead. Is off the free kick. Can be taken again here by Sibley, who has looked better here in the second half. They try a through ball that time off the foot of Parnell, but the Zephyrs able to begin a rush back the other way. A little miscommunication there from the Zephyrs as Padelford left it back for Barry. Padelford is double teamed. Can be taken further again. Now it goes off the foot of a Warrior. No, it won't be. It'll be off the foot of a Zephyr, and there'll be substitutions again on this throw. Five. Substitutes coming on for the Zephyrs, one for the Warriors on that far sideline. This will be a throw right here near side. Danica Veerling to take it. Excellent camera work by our camera operator down there as well. Again, if you are interested in joining us for camera operational duties or to join us in calling a game, you can certainly do so by reaching out to Arlen at arlen at sectv.org, and you can find more information that way in how to come and join us on our broadcasts. Veerling played it further, trying to slow it up. Now a chance now for Lindquist. Lindquist trying to communicate with Wolfsfeld, who was looking for a ball further, but intercepted and defended well by Emily Collins. Veerling off of her foot, a throw coming here for the Zephyrs. Back in the middle, Erica Broughton trying to work her way back into the center. Fielded further back once again, where Savannah Stockness can play. So tie up there looking for the ball, looking the, and the whistle will blow there. Well, a free kick in favor of Matamidi, as Henry Sibley has been very physical on the ball at times tonight. It's a free kick in uh, favor of Henry Sibley. Sydney Potter, right foot a kick. Off of the foot that time of Broughton. 
Wagner has it for the Warriors back on the far side. Goes along further for the foot of Torinskis. Out of bounds can be taken again, rather. As it's Emily Collins working back here near side, all the way back defensively now for Piper Lane, where Collins will have a chance to restart the offense back the other way for the Warriors. Torinskis works back in, a right-footed kick headed as the Zephyrs look to restart play back the other way. Done well now, and a chance now for Lindquist as the ball. Wagner now. Wagner working back in, looking for a through ball back into the six, but unable to get to it as Jansen there first for the Zephyrs as they'll look to start back the other way. Paige Jansen got under it a little bit as players will collide. Warriors able to make a play on the ball. They'll try to field it back further now, and a chance here once again for Lily Lindquist. Lindquist. Some fancy footwork working around the defense that time of Laney Pick. Lindquist, unable to get past that last line of defense before receiving assistance from Annabelle Hinstrom. Hinstrom, all the way back. Broughton from a sharp angle, wide to the left as Potter dived to reach to it. Goes out of bounds, a goal kick as substitutions will come on for the Zephyrs. That was a great shot, and honestly, even if it was on that, I think Potter would have made the save um, regardless, but that was a nice, hard, low shot. Audrey Berry returns to the game for the Matamidi Zephyrs, and she'll replace Ellie Wolsfeld. Chance here again for Sibley as they'll look to start play back the other way. Henry Sibley currently number one in the Metro East Conference. If this result holds, they would remain there. The Zephyrs would move to 4-0-0, good for 12 points. That would put them at second overall, tied in points with the Hastings Raiders. Chance now for Lind Lindquist. Lindquist, edge of the 18, on goal. Save made by Sidney Potter, who will hold on here. As we've hit the halfway point here, the 60th minute out of 80 in this soccer contest. Bounces back into the defensive half of the field. Joji Berry. Berry trying to play for it. Had a battle there with Amara Torres as the ball will go out of bounds. It'll be another throw coming for the Warriors. Torres quickly playing the ball in. Can be played further now as Torres defends the position. Can be gotten here again now for Danica Vierling. Before it's taken away here again by Matamida. Ooh, excellent attacking tackle that time by Sarah Wagner, who sends a shot on and a save made by Paige Jansen. On the far side. Moved further along now. High into the air, Lily Leitner. Back for Laney Pick. Wagner again. Wagner. Nice through ball there, can be played further, but just a little bit off the foot, not a clean look from Piper Lane, and a Zephyr throw coming on the near sideline. Padelford to make the throw near her own bench for Matamidi. As we've hit the 64th minute, 61st minute? 61st minute, due to nothing. We have a timeout and a stoppage as on a tackle right inside of the box, Lily Lindquist had a shoe become untied, and so it'll be a stoppage so she can allow herself to do so once again. And Laney Padalford will await the ability to make the throw. Two to nothing the score. It was a goal by Caitlin Belke at the 13th minute of play, and a goal by Audrey Berry at the 19th minute that has given the Zephyrs a two to nothing advantage. It was a very one-sided first half with the Zephyrs having the dominating pace of play, but the Warriors have been able to respond here and have made it much more 50-50 here in the second half. Yeah, Henry Sibley has definitely had a much stronger half this um, this second half than they did the first half. Uh, they seem to be hustling a little bit more, um, winning more of those 50-50 balls and controlling, just how overall having more control. Chance now for Lindquist, shot on goal, and the save was made by Sidney Potter. A good chance at time by Lindquist, just on the outside at the edge of the 18. Bouncing back in the attacking half now, a chance denied there by the Warriors, but excellent offensive mindsetedness in order to keep this chance alive. Looking for Feerling on the near side, unable to clean it further now. Chance now by Caitlin Belke. Belke looking for Barry. Barry trying to make some more magic happen, but defended excellently that time by Emily Collins as the ball worked back into the defensive half for Henry Sibley. Far side. Waldsberger 
Ball out of bounds. It'll be a Sibley throw. And again, for these Henry, Henry Sibley Warriors who have, in their last couple of seasons, have been middle of the table for a majority of their time. This change to a Metro East schedule has certainly helped them out. 7-6-2 and two last year, but no more than five wins in each of their previous four seasons. And so far, this has looked like a much improved Henry Sibley club over what we've seen in years past. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things where, you know, it's 2020 is a weird year and anything's possible and anything can happen. And, if, you know, I'm a high school player right now. I'm maybe on a team that wasn't hasn't been so great in the past. I go, you know, why not us? Why not this year? Foul called against Zephyrs. It'll be a Sibley free kick upcoming. Again, Matamidi 0 for 7 now on corner kick so far today as will be substitutions awaiting here for the Zephyrs in the near sideline. Sun starting to play a factor along the far sideline. However, the home sideline, plenty of shade. Work back into the 18. Intercepted ball that time as Parnell able to try to work around that Matamidi defense as the ball will go out of bounds. It'll be a corner. First chance on the corner kick in the contest so far for Henry Sibley. This is definitely a time to capitalize. Um, you know, honestly, if they score off this, uh, I'd be watching out. Matamia Henry Sibley is really going to come hard at you after that. Still all here to take the corner far sideline. Again, you see their sun becoming a factor as the ball came back onto the pitch. It's not your time yet, my friend. All tier off the corner. Nobody in the box for Henry Sibley, but the throw, the ball went there. Chance now here, can be played further along now. Working back into the six. Oh, and able to get to it now, they score! First time since 2011, Henry Sibley on the scoreboard against the Zephyrs. Well, that was a play that just, they just didn't get, give up on. You know, Matamidi did a great job of clearing it out in the beginning um, for that goal, but then after that, uh, you know, goalie got caught a little far out of her uh, net and it just kind of bounced over her. She wasn't quite tall enough to get back there and get it. Again, you see the ball go past the reach of Paige Jansen. It might be credited here to Natalie Parnell, number 17, as it looked as though she had a touch on it. But nevertheless, at the 64th minute, two to one, the score. And for the first time since 2011, the Matamidi Zephyrs have conceded a goal to the Henry Sibley Warriors. And certainly off the corner in what's been a much improved second half for the Henry Sibley Warriors, a chance to equalize. Excellent job by Parnell to take that chance away. Oh, and clipped a little bit there. As if we field it again, they're on the far side. Send further up now where Tarinska is able to push it further now as they'll rush back into the back line here. It can be played further once again for the defense of and the goaltending of Paige Jansen. Yeah, once again, um, you know, Matavita needs to be careful right now. Um, Henry Sibley is really going to come back hard at them. They're going to be pumped. Uh, you know, like like you said, this is the first time that they've scored a goal against Matavita since 2011. If I was on the Henry Sibley team right now, I would have so much energy and so much uh, so much push. So Matavita you know, got to really be careful of that and watch out. From a long ways out, Jansen able to make that save. And she'll hold on here, 65th minute, 2-1. to one. Matavita leading Henry Sibley. It's goals from Belke and Barry at the 13th and 19th minute for the Zephyrs, and then at the 64th minute for the Warriors, the goal credited, again, not official by any means, but it appeared as though Natalie Parnell got a touch on it, but a chance now back the other way for the Zephyrs, looking to regain that two goal lead. Sharp angle now, Lily Lindquist trying to cross it into the box and able to get to that, and so far the star of the game for the Henry Sibley Warriors has been Sydney Potter, as she'll hold on. Yeah, she's made a lot of incredible saves, has definitely kept Henry Sibley in this game on um, the first half. You know, uh, you know, Henry Sibley can thank her for being down only down 2-0 and having a chance right now to come back and tie this thing. Great challenge made that time by Amara Torres as the ball will go off of her foot. It'll be a hey, Zephyr throw as right? substitutions you come in for Henry you Sibley on the far sideline. Again, the last time in the matchups between these two schools where we had a one-goal game, that either ended at a game that ended as a one goal game or was close enough to that. That came all the way on the 28th of September 2017 in a one to nothing advantage down in Mendota Heights. Otherwise, the matchups have not been that close since then. 
It will be an awesome moment for the Warriors to be able to levelize here, but even just momentum going into your next contest, a great way for the Warriors, if they're able to hold on or equalize or, heaven forbid, take the lead, a great way for them to wrap up their season. Yeah, most definitely. And like I said before, you know, the one thing with Matamita is that they really want to make sure that these all these uh, missed corner kick opportunities don't come back to haunt them. Um, the Henry Sibley Warriors were able to capitalize on theirs, and so you definitely want that to come back and haunt you, especially when you've had, what, seven, eight opportunities on the corner kick. Throw here coming far sideline for Henry Sibley as we've hit the 68th minute whistle will blow. And there'll be a substitution on the far sideline for Simley. Sibley, rather, excuse me. Again, the boys matchup to follow at the conclusion of this one. Again, one of the, if you're watching soccer for the first time this year, a change from this year to years previous, no overtime if the score is level at the end of regulation as the game will just end after that 80th minute. Ball going back onto the far side. Can we play further again by Terenskis? And knocked out of harm's way by Emily Collins back into the attacking half. Barry has it played further now by Broughton. Excellent attacking pressure this time sustained by Henry Sibley. It looked as though a little bit of a push there and an extra tackle there and it'll be a whistle that'll go back in favor of the Henry Sibley Warriors. Free kick up coming as a defensive backline can play it. The goaltender Potter going all the way up until halfway between the goal box and midfield. As it'll be a free kick again here taken by the Warriors, Emily Collins. Collins trying to work back into the 18. Ball can be taken here. A little bit of a turnover there in miscommunication. An excellent clearing attempt that time made by Annabelle Hinstrom. Working back the other way now. A race, great touch ball looking here for Audrey Berry. Barry working back into space as they look to regain the two goal advantage. Audrey Barry defended well that time by Torinskis as the ball goes high over the net and we will have a substitution here. That was a great defensive play there by uh, Henry Sibley. Um, you know, we know Barry's uh, dangerous as we've seen a lot in this game and so to be able to, you know, kind of keep her at the outside and not get a shot off is a great, def is a great defensive play by Henry Sibley. Sydney Potter to play it. And she'll go back along that far sideline near the Sibley bench. Unable to field it cleanly that time, though, was Turinskis. We'll have another throw coming on that far side. Defended well, but got called for the push there. It'll be a free kick coming. It'll be a free kick coming. A yellow card assessed, in fact, because of the pushing to Julia Turinskis. Oh, wow. And that's the first booking of the contest at the 70th minute. So Terenskis gets the yellow card. She will come off the pitch for the time being. As it'll be a free kick for Matamidai from about 30 yards out. Right foot a kick, everybody driving towards the box. A chance that goes wide to the right. It goes out of bounds and a goal kick up coming here for Henry Sibley. Potter looking for the team to reset. Correct me if I'm wrong here in counting. As Potter kicks a line drive back into the attacking half. As I count the Warriors on the field, do I only count 10? 11 with the goalie. Okay, well, so I was counting correctly, okay. It looked as though there was a bit of a period there where Sibley had played with 10, but no, they do have the normalized 11. Ball can be fielded further here now. Ball goes out of bounds here. And it will be a warrior throw. Working back here. It'll work its way back into the middle of the pitch. Parnell trying to work around. The whistle will blow. As both teams starting to get a little bit physical on the ball carrier. As we hit the 71st minute of play. 
Can we play it further up now? Emily Collins looking back for Parnell, the goal scorer for Henry Sibley. Again, the first goal that the Warriors have scored against Matamidi in girls soccer since scoring two in September of 2011. As the ball will go out of bounds into the Sibley stand on the far sideline. That'll be another Warrior throw on that far side. And the clock stops on substitutions inside of five minutes here, so the Warriors may get the chance to play with that when the time comes. Held in, but past the legs that time of Torinskis. Back far sideline, trying to work her way back again, out of bounds, and another Warrior throw coming on the far sideline. Again, that rule as far as a stop clock on substitutions, new as of last season, as some teams with advantages in late game situations would tend to make as many substitutes as possible to wind that clock down. And so the committee made the decision, the competitive committee made the decision to institute that rule as a way to negate that as best they could. As the Warriors continue to shovel their way down the field, Parnell off the foot that time of Torres as the ball will go back in possession of the Zephyrs. So will race back into the center. It will go on to the Henry Sibley side of the field, out of bounds near the Warrior bench. It'll be another throw up coming here for Henry Sibley. Seven minutes and counting remaining here. Two to one, the Zephyrs lead. Thrown back in. Broughton. We'll go back further where it can be played here again by Collins. Looking here near side as it can be gone to first by Kate Holst. Holst working back into the six. Oh, and just topped out just a little more than she wanted to as the ball slowly rolled past Sydney Potter and wide to the left. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what Sydney Potter was trying to do, is trying to basically just get her to miss a net or shoot straight into her, and that's exactly what happened. Um, you know, it was a great look um, otherwise, though. Into the 18. Able to recover are the Warriors. Shot on from about 30 yards out. Can be got to here again by Sydney Potter. As the Warriors will look to restart play back the other way. High into the air, Winklehacky. Headed further that time before the Warriors can try to get back to it. It's defended here now by Matamidi. It'll be taken again here, or oh, challenge there. Nice stand-up tackle that time by Krista Tyvall as the Zephyr is able to restart play back into the attacking half, looking to go up by two again. They led by two until the 64th minute here of the second half, where it was a goal by Natalie Parnell that gave the Warriors a chance to become within one as they are looking for the equalizer here. Far side, Parnell had it go off of a foot of a Zephyr. We're gonna be taken further back again on that far sideline now, and a chance as the Zephyrs will retake it for Callie Halatzis. Off of Michaela, uh, McKen, Mickey Stockness rather, excuse me. And back into the attacking half, Lily Leitner working onto that far sideline. All the way out past the goal line, a goal kick up coming here for the Zephyrs as Paige Jansen will come on to make the goal kick. Substitutions here as Padelford, Laney Padelford re-enters the game, as does Lily Lindquist, both who have had excellent games for Padelford on the back half and for Lindquist on the attacking half, doing an excellent job of defending and creating chances for their respective sides. Struggling, though, to clear the ball out of the attacking half now on a through ball. Is able to get to that time by Paige Jansen. She'll hold on and will look to slow things down for the Zephyrs here. Thir 75th minute of play, 2-1 to one the score. Back into the Matamidi attacking half. Forced off the ball that time was Belke, who looks to lateral that pass further up ahead now here on the near sideline for Kate Holst. Holst working from a sharp angle, trying to get around Collins, was able to do so with the ball, but defended well by Henry Sibley as it can be played again here. For the Warriors, near sideline, Estella Altier. Trying a through ball, looking further for Winklehacky, but it goes out of bounds. It'll be a Zephyr throw. Whistle blows here as there'll be substitutions again as coming in for the Zephyrs are Cam Campbell Waldsberger and Audrey Berry. Back into the game for the Matamidi Zephyrs. No substitutions on the Sibley side. And we'll have another throw right in front of the Matamidi bench. Barry. Barry defended well that time here by Piper Lane as it goes back as the Warriors try to play it further along. Chance now here 
in the late stages of this one. Belke working here now and a chance for Lindquist, able to work her way in, but the ball knocked out of harm's way that time by Piper Lane. It'll be a Zephyr throw far sideline. Mickey Stockness will make the throw from that far side here. Four minutes and counting, 76th minute. Working back here, got a little under that one. Ball goes <laughs> up and out of play. Be a goal kick coming as will be a substitution here again on the Sibley side as Danica Veerling will come back into the game and will replace Piper Lane as they will choose to defer defense for offense here in the last four. Again, clock stop 3.59 and counting remaining. And restarting again with the official's whistle. Potter, near side for Altier. Trying to spring the offense back the other way, but defended with seniority by Haley James as the ball will go out of bounds and it will be a foul called against Matamidi and it'll be a free kick here for Sibley. Yeah, that was uh, definitely the right call. She basically threw herself at the uh, Henry Sibley play. It's a pretty easy call to make right there. Emily Collins says a goaltender, Sydney Potter, will come up to be a part of the play. Collins will take. Actually, no, it won't be Collins that will take the free kick. Potter will def It will be Potter who will take the free kick from about 55 yards out. As everybody's standing on the inside part of the 18. Through the ball right on goal. And a save made by Paige Jansen. Not much of a challenge there. As the ball right on. Yeah, I love the gutsy move of uh, moving Potter up to take the kick on that. You know, you're down uh, by one goal with uh, about three minutes left to play. Uh, why not take the chance? Under the ball a little bit. It can be played here again on the near sideline as Audrey Berry trying to equalize. Excellent through ball that time here for Lily Lindquist, but excellent challenge back the other way for Sydney Potter. Off the hip that time of one of the Matamidi defenders. Be taken here again by Lindquist. As she'll work from about 20 yards out, defended well that time by Emily Collins. Broughton. From very far out, got under it. And it will go wide to the right. Can be played here again by Potter. Potter on the goal kick. Looking at that time. Intercepted and taken away here by Lily Lindquist. Lindquist. Trying to make something of it here. Goes for Barry on the white right wing. Defended well by Danica Veerling. Mara Torres. And then Broughton back again for the Zephyrs. Broughton trying to work back into the 18 before Collins able to clear it back out. Your 79th minute of play. Taken again here by Belke. Collins, strong tackle on the ball, trying to force Belke back. Be taken again here by Broughton. Lindquist, lost the handle on it, as will try to play further along now here and a chance for Winklehackey. Winklehackey forced off the ball, and Padelford racing for it, trying to win that battle, is able to do so, forcing the Warriors back into their own defensive end. As the ball will go out of bounds here, and it will be a Warrior throw here, as we've reached the one minute mark here of the second half. An excellent contest, Zephyrs two, Warriors one, as we hit the one minute mark as the ball Goes off of a Warrior that time. It'll be another Zephyr throw as Padelford will make it. Padelford certainly can take her time on the throw, but does need to put the ball back into play. Off of Barry, who played here again by the Warriors. Sarah Wagner. Nice through ball attempted there by Parnell. As the ball will go back onto the back line. Taken again here by Belke. Cross in front. Nice through ball from Lindquist's foot there, and a good challenge that time is diving over the top of the goaltender Potter as Waltzberger. As the Warriors look to try to get one last chance here with 20 seconds remaining. Over the head that time, as Stockness will go back to play it out of bounds. Here, a quick throw coming up for the Warriors here, 12 seconds remaining. Ball going back in there, goes out. Chance there, not able to quite get enough on it was Leitner off there as Stockness able to field it out of play. And that will be the siren. And a much better second half for the Henry Sibley Warriors. But Matamidi, tough as always to beat at home as they are victorious by a final of two to one tonight. 
Yeah, definitely a much better half there by Henry Sibley for the last half of that game. Um, you know, I it's you know, a little something to take away from. You can learn from your first half, but uh, um, they had a really good push. I would like to see a little bit more push by them in the last couple minutes of the game, but they did a great job. And on the other side of things, Matamita, you know, they hung on to that lead. They didn't make those uh, seven or eight uh, missed uh, corner kicks come back to haunt them. Um, so, you know, they can tell that they're a very skilled team, very tough team, a team that does a great job of uh, uh, creating turnovers and uh, um, keeping control of the ball. With this result, the Monomini Zephyrs, again, number one ranked in Class A in girls soccer. They'll advance to 4-0-0. Their only contest remaining on the season is that's scheduled so far is that of a regular season tilt with the Hill Murray Pioneers in what should be a considered as a state tournament game as the winner of that one often will be regarded as the winner. You see there are upcoming broadcasts. Again, we have the boys' contest coming up, and then we also have White Bear Lake and Stillwater and girls' soccer. On the other side of White Bear Lake, that one will come up with you here um, very shortly. As the boys' teams make their way out onto the field, we haven't seen them put a clock up here, but for the Monomini Zephyrs, they'll improve to 4-0-0 on the season, and the Henry Sibley Warriors will fall to 4-2-1, and, and that will wrap up their version of the regular season. For Allison Vogt, I am Alex Westad. The final here, two to one. The Monomini Dice Zephyr is victorious. We will be back in just a few moments on SEC TV for the boys game. But for all of you here for the girls game, this is your home for Monomini Dice Soccer on SEC Sports.